Okay, taking a look at our next topic, grade nines, which is chemical reactions. Okay, um, we're going to be having a look at uh, chemical equations, how we use chemical equations to represent uh, reactions, as well as we're going to learn how to balance equations and why it's so important that we do. Okay, so what have we learned up until now? Uh, in this section of the periodic table, we've looked at uh, compounds and how they are formed with one or with two or more atoms. And we've seen how they form during a chemical reaction. For example, we know that it is the combination of sodium and chlorine that forms sodium chloride, which is NaCl, which is known as table salt. Okay, now we can show chemical reactions in two different ways, either by using models or using symbols. So uh, let's look at the model approach uh, first. Okay, and we're going to use a simple compound um, of water. Okay, water, we know has many different names, aqua, you know, um, H2O is its chemical name, okay, of course, H2O, that is water basically, chemically, okay, and it is obviously formed when two hydrogen atoms uh, and one oxygen atom join together, okay, well, we have, if we have a little model here, okay, we have one oxygen atom plus two hydrogen atoms, ah, that circle's a little small there, or a little bigger, there you go, okay, and we don't use equal signs in chemical reactions, or when we are explaining chemistry, we use a arrow, like this, to show what it's going to become, what it's going to yield, okay, you will hear that word a lot throughout, um, you'll hear that word a lot throughout chemistry, if, if you decide to do physics next year, etc. Okay, yield. Okay, and we get a molecule that looks like this. Okay, we have oxygen. Okay, which is that's the O oxygen there, and it is formed like this. Okay, now how does this uh, look? All right, how does this look? It looks like it is what is called bent. Water is a bent molecule, all right? It's bent, okay? That's how we describe it, okay? There is another example. If we have uh, one, um, if we take a look at carbon dioxide, which is formed by uh, two oxygen atoms, okay? I'm going to just write O and O, uh, plus one carbon. Um, atom or two oxygen atoms join or are combined with one um, carbon atom and then of course we get a CO2 okay okay and that's how the model approach looks okay if we are explaining a reaction using a model approach okay but uh, making models uh, in, a, in, in an exam uh, to explain this or making models using actual model figures uh, can take some time. It definitely can take a lot of time and very time consuming. So scientists usually use uh, symbols in chemical equations to show chemical reactions, okay? Uh, for example, uh, carbon and oxygen, of course, react to form, all right? Carbon dioxide. Okay, let's look at the chemical equation for this scenario. Okay, so we have C, which is carbon, plus, remember, two oxygen atoms, so plus O2, yields CO2. Okay, remember oxygen, diatomic, all right, it's diatomic means it can not exist by itself. It must bond to a another uh, or bond to another oxygen. So in other words, it must bond to another one of its kind, O2. All right, it's always O2, okay? Hydrogen is also another diatomic uh, 
um, element is in, 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 in terms, in the sense of it can't exist on its own as well. It must exist with another body of, of itself. Let's take a look here. For water, okay, we'll have H2 plus O2. And that gives us, ah, draw that line a bit straighter, H2O. Okay, exactly the same thing. Okay, I've just used a chemical uh, reaction or chemical equation to demonstrate the same type of reaction. Okay. So, we call everything on the left-hand side here. Okay, so these things over here and uh, these things over here, we call them uh, reactants. Okay, write that word here, reactants. Okay, and everything like over here and here, we call them products. Okay, so everything on the left side of the equation, all right, will be known as your reactants. Everything on the right will be known as your products. Okay, now, for water, the formation of hydrogen and uh, hydrogen plus uh, oxygen to make H2O. The hydrogen and the oxygen atoms, all right, we can see that there is an imbalance here. I've got two hydrogens, I've got two oxygens, and I've only got two hydrogens here and one oxygen. So this formation cannot be correct according to what I have um, written here, okay? Because it's not adding up, all right? My left and my right side are not balanced. I need to balance them, okay? So what I would do is I would sort out my oxygens first. So I've got, I put a two, a balancing two in front of H2O, meaning I've got two times one, I have two oxygens. But my hydrogens are now out of balance, right? They are imbalanced. So two times two is four. So I need to put another two here in front of H2. Now I've got four hydrogens, four hydrogens, two oxygens, two oxygens. Water is now a balanced, um, has a, now a balanced chemical reaction. The number that is in front of the elements or the compounds, they basically show the ratio in which the molecules react. Okay, if the number is one, such as here in carbon and oxygen, it's one, one, one. The number is not shown because one is considered intuitive. Okay, so the one will never be shown. Okay, but for example, in the equation. Um, 2H2 plus O2 gives us 2H2O. It tells us that two molecules of hydrogen react with one molecule of oxygen to form water. The ratio of hydrogen to oxygen, okay, this is ratio of hydrogen to oxygen, for the reactants is 2 is to 1. All right? 2 is to 1, okay? So, we need to learn how, or we need to balance equations, all right? If you count by the hydrogen atoms on both sides, now after the equations has been balanced, you get these numbers, okay? We have four uh, hydrogens, and you get two oxygens on both sides, okay? There are basically there so that they are showing that there's no atoms lost, all right? If we had two, we end up with two because we balanced it. No atoms were lost in the formation of water, okay? Basically, in a balanced equation, the total number and type of atoms of the reactants must be the same. So if I have a product formed, the amount of the total number of reactants must equal the total number of my products. If I had two hydrogens reacting with two oxygens, I must end up with two hydrogens and two oxygens. Unfortunately, when water forms, I only get H2O. So I need to go and balance the equation saying that two H2 molecules 
reacting with one O two molecule gives me two water molecules. That's a balanced equation. That's balanced ratio. Okay. Basically, we are trying. You basically you are stating that my number of reactants must give me the same number of products. Okay. So if we look at water more closely, which is hydrogen plus water, which gives us hydrogen plus oxygen, it gives us water. The element oxygen in the air always consists of two atoms. That's why it's written as O2. If we write the equation for water as it is without these uh, numbers written in white, just the blue, H2 plus O2 gives us H2O, okay? It would not be balanced. Why? Because the reactants are two hydrogen atoms and two oxygen atoms and the product is only two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom okay so the correct way to write the balanced equation for the reaction is 2h2 plus o2 gives us 2h2o we are only writing a balanced equation for the reaction that takes place because if we understand equations in maths all right um, these would be quite easy to understand as we are balancing all right if we find X um, the a value for X in uh, in maths and we sub that into our equation we'll get an answer that we're looking for because we found what X was so this equation here now is balanced because the reactants contain four hydrogens two oxygen atoms and the products contains the same four hydrogens and two oxygen um, atoms as well okay so all we're doing here is just writing the equation for the reaction the correct way that's all we're doing when it comes to balancing equations okay because the reaction will always be the reaction but when it comes to writing an equation for the reaction it must be balanced because everything in chemistry must be balanced because balanced equals stable and stability in chemistry means no kaboom all right if something's unstable if a reaction is unstable kaboom poof explosion people dead animals dead buildings destroyed you get my point do i need to continue make this invisible Right, magnesium oxide. Now, I'm going to write out the uh, word for it first. So let's write the um, using their names. So I've got magnesium, okay, and plus oxygen. Um, that obviously gives us, um, obviously gives us, sorry, uh, magnesium oxide. Excuse me. <clears throat> So, uh, in chemically, chemical formula, that would be Mg uh, plus O2. Why? Because what, as we mentioned, oxygen in the air always consists of two atoms. That's why it's written as O2. But when they bond to each other, they form only MgO. Right? They only form MgO. Now, this is an unbalanced equation not reaction an unbalanced equation so we need to go and we need to balance the equation now so let's swap the colors around so what's the first thing that I see is not balanced well here I've got uh, one magnesium atom plus two oxygen atoms which gives me one magnesium and one oxygen Magnesium, I've got one to one unbalanced, so I'm fine, but my oxygen is definitely unbalanced. So that's the first element that I see that is unbalanced. So I go and I put a two in front of MgO. So this means now I've got two oxygens and I've got two magnesiums, and here I've got two oxygens. So oxygens are in check. Fantastic. But now my magnesium is in is unbalanced. I've got only one here, and now I have two here. So I take my two, and I put it in front of magnesium. So now, 
I've added up, I've got two magnesium and two magnesium, I'm all good. All right, my magnesium's balance, my oxygen's balance, and I now have a balanced equation. All right, I now have a balanced equation. Okay, I've checked it, I've added up all the number of atoms on each side, all right, and then I've added up on the reactants and the products, they're the same, I have a balanced equation, the reaction remains the same. Now that concludes my presentation for this week, grade nines. Thank you so much for joining me on uh, balancing equations as chemical and chemical reactions. We'll see each other in the next part for some more practice on how to balance equations as they do not disappear. They are from now with you all the way through until matric should you continue to take physical sciences as your subject.